On today's episode of Chicago Bears Now, I'm going to take a look at eight Bears players on the hot seat heading into training camp. Players that may not have the type of job and role on this team this year that they thought. Also, players that could even get cut if things don't go their way. Now, some training camp dates to be alarmed of on the 25th of July. Players will report that first camp practice is the next day on the 26th. On August 6th, it's Bears Family Fest at Soldier Field, so a chance for you to go see the boys in uh, action at the stadium. There's several open practices at Hallis Hall as well. And then August 14th is the final camp practice. There's some uh, joint practices with the Colts the following week, but uh, those are up in Indianapolis. Now, before we get started with those Bears players on the hot seat, uh, once we reach 5,000 followers on my Instagram uh, page at HGram NFL. I'm going to go live. I'm going to do a Bears IG live. I did a lot of these last year. It's been a while since I've done it. We're 742 away. I'd love to get there by training camp. That way I can do a kind of training camp preview IG live. So if that's something you're interested in, give me a follow. Let's get to 5,000. Once we do so, uh, we will do an Instagram live for the Bears. All right, first player I'm taking a look at on the hot seat, Valus Jones Jr., the wide receiver entering his second year with the Chicago Bears. And look, it's pretty simple as to why he's on the hot seat. The Bears kind of loaded up at receiver, not only with DJ Moore at the top, but also with some depth. And Valus Jones is a rookie. You see him muff that punt there, made several critical errors and did not provide a lot offensively. You look at his stats uh, last year, had only seven catches as a rookie for 107 yards, nine carries for 103. So in the jet sweep game, he was kind of effective there. Uh, and he was good as a kick returner, but he got benched as a punt returner because he had three muffed punts early in the year. Dante Pettis took over that role. Uh, so that is why he enters this year on the hot seat. I get it, he was a third round pick last year, but when you add DJ Moore, when Claypool's firmly in the fold now and you draft Tyler Scott, those top four guys right there will be on the opening day roster, barring something unforeseen with an injury. Uh, Equinemia St. Brown's a player they like. Dante Pettis uh, has performed really well. If Pettis keeps performing like he did in OTAs in minicamp, the Bears are going to have a decision on their hands. Bayless Jones needs to come out and have a productive training camp in preseason. If he doesn't, he could still make the team, but I don't think it's a lock. I really don't. I think at best he's wide receiver five right now. Even if he's ahead of Tyler Scott in the pecking order, Scott will not get cut. They just drafted him a couple months ago in the fourth round. He's not getting cut. Uh, they would much uh, rather and much quickly, uh, much more quickly move on from Bayless Jones if that were uh, to be a decision they had to make. And uh, again, if Pettis keeps uh, performing at a high level and shows his special teams value that he has, Bayless could be in trouble. What do you guys think? Will Bayless Jones make the 53-man roster? Type M for make, W for won't. Still think he's on the right side of the 53 right now. I had him making it in my roster projection, but again, it is not a guarantee. Let's go to Travis Homer, the running back, who got a two-year deal in free agency, which made you think he was a lock to make the team at the time, and I still think he's got a decent chance of making it, but Travis Homer is has limitations offensively. He's not a guy you're going to give really carries to. He's a guy, you know, third down, keep an obvious passing down you can dump it off to, and he does have good special teams value. But doesn't the Bears running back position just feel a little crowded right now? Like, I've flipped Deontay Foreman and Roshan Johnson because Roshan coming out of minicamp is – Kind of clearly that third back right now, which isn't a huge surprise, right? I mean, he's a rookie. He's still picking up things. Khalil Herbert's been around. Deontay Foreman's a veteran in this league. He uh, got some reps with the first team even. He's got a chance to maybe even start for this team. Roshan's obviously not going to get cut. And if Herbert, Foreman, and Johnson are all locks to make the team, which right now I think they are, Blazing Game's going to make it as a fullback unless they shock us and not carry one. Are you going to carry a fourth running back when you're already carrying a fullback? It feels a little crowded for Travis Homer. And that you also have Tristan Ebner in the mix. Now, I've been on record. I don't think Ebner makes his team unless he just wows us in camp in preseason. But it's another body you got to get through if you're Travis Homer. So it feels crowded. You could go heavy at this position because you're going to run the football a lot. And Homer is a good special teams player. But if you can find special teams value elsewhere, we know Roshan's going to play special teams. Then maybe you cut. Uh, a guy like Travis Homer. Maybe you try to flip him for like a late seventh round pick or something uh, before the season starts, but uh, it feels a little crowded. I'm keeping an eye on this position. 
Let's go to an offensive lineman, Larry Borum, who's entering his third year in the NFL, second year in this offense, former fifth-round pick, and uh, he's fighting for his uh, role on his this team right now. He's been a guy that started some. He's been a guy that's been a backup some on this Bears offensive line. Obviously, right now, he definitely does not project to be a starter. That became clear when Chicago drafted Darnell Wright with the number 10 overall pick, the offensive tackle out of Tennessee. And Matt Aberflus kind of put Larry Borum on notice at the end of minicamp. He said, look, it's a big summer for Larry Borum. Kind of talking about how guys need to come uh, into training camp in really good shape, conditioning and stuff. And I think Larry Borum is a guy that uh, – doesn't quite fit the body type mold that they're looking for. Remember uh, when uh, Ryan Pace was the GM, uh, he liked heavier O-linemen, and Larry Borum, you know, kind of fit that mold. And, you know, he shedded some weight last year, but does he have the agility to be a piece on this offensive line? He's not going to start. That much is clear. But the swing tackle job is up for grabs. So whether you're Larry Borum or Alex Leatherwood or someone else, there's an opportunity there to take that job. And the thing with Borum, too, is he's got some interior flexibility. So he's just got to show that he is a valuable piece on this offensive line. We'll have to wait and see uh, if he uh, can prove to be just that. Otherwise, he could be on the wrong side of the 53. All right, Bears fans, before we continue, time to tell you about our sponsor today. That is NordVPN. Protect your digital world right now and get 63% off NordVPN's two-year plan. NordVPN is striving to make the internet better than it is today. It can be free from online threats, censorship, and surveillance. Get your online security package now by visiting nordvpn.com slash bearscs. Uh, get four months for free by using that link in the description and comment section when you purchase the NordVPN two-year plan. Let me tell you about all of the awesome features you're going to get with this NordVPN package. You're going to get online protection with a single click. Don't miss your favorite content like Bears Now by Chat Sports. Stay safe from malware and... It's the fastest VPN on the planet. So not only is it safe and easy, it's also very fast, which is very helpful and important as well uh, when you get going with a VPN. That's why we recommend NordVPN here at Chat Sports. Uh, and the best part about it, it all happens with a simple as one click. Choose your location and click connect to get started. NordVPN won't track you or share what you do online. Your data is always protected by next generation encryption. So get started now. Click the link in the description or the comments of this video. That's nordvpn.com slash bearscs to get four months for free. Best part, 30 day money back guaranteed for any reason whatsoever. NordVPN.com slash BearCS. Go to the defense here. Travis Gibson entering the final year of his rookie contract. Now, I'll make it clear here, the fourth-year edge rusher, I do think he's safe to make this roster because at this point because you're still pretty thin at edge, right? I mean, we've talked about the Bears needing to add edge rusher or rushers uh, for quite a while now. So I do think Gibson is fairly safe to make the team, but he's on the hot seat in terms of what his role is and what his future is in Chicago. I think right now he's a backup who's going to rotate in some. I mean, you look at his past two seasons in 2021, he had seven sacks. It was kind of a mini breakout and you're like, oh wow, you know, my bold one of my bold predictions, I believe last year was Travis Gibson would have double digit sacks. That did not happen. He only had three sacks uh, in 2022. Is he a bat fit in a 4-3 compared to a 3-4? That's hard to say, but if he's going to be a part of the future here, he needs to bounce back and have a solid season here uh, for Chicago. The good news for him as of now, he should have chances, right? I mean, you've really only got four guys right now that I would feel fairly comfortable putting out there. I know Terrell Lewis had a pretty strong mini camp, but Outside of Demarcus Walker, who, by the way, is probably going to kick inside some, Rasheen Green and Dominic Robinson and Travis Gibson, that's kind of it. So I think he's got an opportunity, which for me makes it a make or break year. Like contract year, can you deliver and be a guy that Ryan Poles is willing to keep around beyond the 2023 season? Uh, see to see heating up for Travis Gibson. The clock is ticking. Who will lead the Bears in sacks this season? Could Travis Gibson shock us and lead the team? I'm going to say it's Demarcus Walker, at least as of now. But let me know what you guys think. Who's going to lead this team in sacks in 2023? How about Kendall Vildor, who has gotten a lot of playing time over the past couple of years in particular. Uh, entered 2021 as a starter, earned a starting job last year, uh, at least in base situations. He was kind of that third corner, second outside guy when they were sitting in nickel. And uh, 
Kendall Vildor has, you know, he's he, he's been a bit of a warrior for this team. He's accepted being a backup at times. He's, uh, you know, gotten to play as a starter and, you know, I think has gotten a little better each and every year. Uh, you look at his PFF grades last year, definitely the best of his career. Certainly not great. I mean, 58.8 coverage grade, that's, that's below average. You'd like that to be in the mid-60s at least. Did have a pick, five breakups, but... Um, I think the reason he's on the hot seat and is, has put on notice is the Bears traded up a few slots to get Tyreek Stevenson in the second round, and he's delivered on that so far. He had a great minicamp, great OTAs. I think he is very much in line to be that second starting cornerback opposite of Jalen Johnson with Kyler Gordon manning the nickel. So that kind of leaves Kendall Vildor with Stevenson likely starting day one as your CB4 at best. Well, Keep in mind, you've got Jalen Jones and Josh Blackwell, a couple of UDFAs last year that got some playing time, and they're more cost-controlled as UDFAs. Bill Doerr is on the final year of his deal, and you could actually save a couple million bucks if you cut them. So if Jones and um, Blackwell are anywhere close to Vildor, they could opt to keep them in either – cut or trade Vildor for a late pick. So uh, we'll see what happens there. I think Stevenson starts, and uh, that could be bad news for Kendall Vildor. So these are the five primary bears on the hot seat. I'll take a look at three honorable mentions here in just a sec. Bayless Jones Jr., hey, Tyler Scott's in the fold. Dante Pettis, got to pick it up, buddy. Travis Homer, crowded running back room, we'll see. Larry Borum, guard tackle, versatile guy, swing tackle job up for grabs. We'll see what he can do. Travis Gibson, linebacker edge, we'll see. Uh, and then Kendall Vildor uh, at that quarterback position. Now, some honorable mentions. Uh, Equinemius St. Brown, why do I mention another receiver? Well, what if Bayless Jones does impress and Dante Pettis does keep making plays and they think those two guys have more special teams value than St. Brown? They could opt to keep them. Now, St. Brown's in a good spot because he's one of your best blocking wide receivers, but uh, something to monitor there. Elijah Hicks didn't have a great mini camp. If Kendall Williamson beats him out, what if you bring back DeAndre Houston Carson? That's a player to watch. Year two, seventh round pick. And then Alex Leatherwood. The Bears put in a claim for him last year, picked him up off waivers when the Raiders cut him. Is he going to be a reliable player? Can he win the swing tackle job, which Larry Borum is also competing for? Uh, keep an eye on that as well. Now, who is the number one Bears player on the hot seat for 2023? I want to hear it from you guys right now. Who is on the hot seat more than anyone else? All right, guys, that's going to do it for today's show. Remember, follow me on IG, hit me up, DMs always open, down to chop up some Bears football. Uh, once we get to 5,000 followers, we will do a Bears Now Instagram Live. You guys can pop on and ask your questions at HGramNFL. We'll see you guys soon. Bear down.